Okay, my game dev machos, in the previous video we created a player and his animations, but now we need to move the player. So in order to do that, let's right click here and create a new folder with, I don't know, scripts. I'm going to call it scripts basically. And inside we are going to create a new C sharp script, but before that actually create a player scripts folder where we're going to store the scripts for the player. So now we're going to create another folder and another folder, and I'm just kidding. We are going to create a C sharp folder, C sharp script, and I'm going to call this one player walk and we are going to attach this bad boy on the player so simply drag and drop it over here don't hesitate don't be shy just you know drag and drop it double click it and open it here in visual studio of course i am quickly going to you know do my thing if you followed any of my tutorials any of my courses you know that i have my thing when it comes to these things i have a thing when it comes to these things yeah i'm throwing bars at the mars anyways so what do we need in order to move the player well we need two things we need the move speed and we need the rigid body so over here i'm going to say serialize field and i am going to create a private float move speed that is going to be equal to six while i am at it i'm also going to say comma and create the jump force which is going to be equal to 10f for those of you who are confused what the hell is this teacher i i don't know you, you're confusing me i would like to you know kick your head or whatever don't do that I'm going to just explain what this is. Well, this is equivalent to writing this right here. So if we can, you know, type again over here, private float, jump force equal to 20 or whatever. Well, instead of, you know, typing it like that, we can type it out like this. Because we type two variable names in a single line, this counts as two variables. This means we have a float of you know, type of float variable named move speed. And we have another one, which is the jump force. So these are two separate variables. And as I said, this right here, writing in like this is equivalent to writing here like this. And then, you know, nothing after that and writing here down below jump force. So instead of me doing that, I'm going to do it on a single line, get used to it and uh, yeah, just kidding. But these are things that you need to know, especially if you are experimenting with different people's projects and you're downloading that or you're working in a team and somebody writes something like this you don't know what it is you're in trouble so next is a private rigid body that i'm going to call my body because i have an awesome awesome body and basically that will be it over here i'm also going to create a private vector three for the temp position because I'm going to show you multiple ways how we can move a character not only one but multiple ways because you know why not why shouldn't I show you multiple ways to do something because that is the point of these tutorials that is the point of me teaching you and uh, yeah so let's go here in the awake function where I like to get my references I'm going to say here awake and my awesome body is going to be equal to get the component and passing here the rigid body to the component that we are going to get and now, as I said, we are going to have multiple ways in order to move the character. So the first one is void handle movement with transform. This is the most regular one that you see in basically every single tutorial online that is posted. And of course, you will not see, you will see different ways how people are coding this. If you like this tutorial series and you would like to access all the videos at once, you can do that in my Game Development Academy, link is down below. For a small monthly fee, you can access this tutorial series right away and all other tutorial series that I will publish on YouTube and you don't have to wait every single day until I publish a video. And plus, you will access more than 80 other courses where you can learn game development. So check it out, link is down below. So let's go over here. I'm going to say update and handle movement with transform. What I like to do is I like to have my temp position. So this variable over here that is going to be used to store the transform. I like to declare it over here. So then I can simply say temp position is equal to transform position. And here at the bottom, I can say transform that position is equal to temp. Now, in between, we are going to test if our input dot get key. So if we press the key and I'm going to say here key code A. So if we press the key code A or if we press so over here, these double pipe signs means or if we press the left arrow. So left arrow. There you go like this, then I'm going to say our temp position dot X minus equals the move speed. So it's move speed multiplied with time dot delta time. 
otherwise, so else, or simply over here, if our input dot get key and we have pressed the key code D or we have pressed over here or we have pressed the right arrow, there we go. Then we are going to do the opposite. We're simply going to say this right here is plus equals. Instead of minus equals, it is going to be plus equals. So here I'm going to say plus equals move speed. Now, basically this get key will return true at the frame where we pressed and hold the key code A or the left arrow key. Over here we have the D and the right arrow key. And over here we're subtracting from our position. Over here we're adding to our position because the Unity's coordinate system, it works like this. So this is the coordinate system. This is the Y, this is the X. In the right side, it's the positive. In the left side is the negative. Up on the Y axis is the positive, down is the negative. So this is how Unity's coordinate system works. That's why over here, if you want to move to the right side we need to add to this and over here we need to subtract from it and over here this or if you don't know what it is just make sure that you watch my C sharp you know introduction you have that in the most basic unity tutorial I have ever created the beginning is C sharp so you should go through that if you don't understand what this is so if I go back here in my editor we will be able to move the character so let's try it out so if I hit the play button there you go, the character is moving left and right. He is, of course, still not animating. Don't worry about that. We will animate him. Don't worry, don't worry, don't panic. This is just for the movement. Now I'm going to show you different ways how to move, as I already said. And I don't know why I'm repeating. And you can see, we're moving. Now, why I like to create here the temporary position, so over here, store it, because if you do something like this, like vector3, temp position, and vector, it's not vector, it's vector3. Come on, come on, there we go. So if you do something like this, it's not noticeable, especially on high-end devices, computers and stuff like that. But this right here, because it's called in the update, and usually the code that you use to move the player with the transform, you put it in the update, especially because you're using time.delta time. You don't put it in the fixed update. This code goes in the update most of the times. That's a general rule, but there are always exceptions to the rule. When you use this light right here, then every frame in the update you are calling, you know, this right here, it is going to create a new vector3 variable, a new object, a new trash to be picked up by the garbage collector. And that's why this code right here, this right here, believe it or not, is going to cause 0.02 milliseconds in execution. So for those of you who know what is Unity Profiler and you profile your games, you know that you need to have 15 milliseconds for your whole code to execute in a single frame for you, or actually to execute in order for you to achieve 60 frames in a second. 15, this right here causes 0.02. Now you might say, well, that isn't, what is 0.02? I need 15. Yeah, but this is called, called every frame. That's one frame 0.02, next frame 0.02, next frame 0.02, you get the point. That's why if you simply do it like this, there you go, <laughs> problem solved. So this is one of the ways how we can move the character. There are, of course, different ways how we can do that. So let's experiment with those ways. The next way is to do it with the rigid body. That's why I have created here my awesome body. So let's go over here, right below. We're going to create void handle movement with rigid body. Or simply I can say uh, my awesome body. Now, what's going to happen over here is we are going to perform the same test. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy it and I am going to remove this from here and I'm going to remove this from here. Over here, I am going to add this to be an else if statement, not to ifs, but simply else if. So if we press the key code A or the left arrow key to move to the left side, then we are going to do the following. I'm going to say my body that velocity is equal to new vector two. And over here, I'm going to say negative of the move speed and zero for the Y because we are not moving the Y. We are only moving the X. We don't need to, you know, for the Y, it can stay zero. So going back over here, if we move to the right side, I'm going to say here the positive and notice the minus over here. I added minus in front in front of the in front of the variable which will make it the negative so this will make this variable a negative variable 
and this right here will make it you know the positive positive. and last but not least here at the bottom else we are simply going to add zero for the boat because we are not moving the character at all so let's go over here in the fixed update because if you are dealing with the code from rigid body or basically using rigid body to move your character then you're going to call it in the fixed update again this is the general rule of course there are always exceptions to this rule so sometimes same as what i did in some of my projects i have called the code that handles velocity rigid body inside of the update i have profiled the game everything worked fine so just remember that. So let's go here and hit the play button. We are going to see some difficulties. And if I hit the play button, let's see those difficulties. First of all, you can see the player is falling very, very slow. That is difficulty number one. And basically the only difficulty. If when he lands, finally, there you go, I can move him. Same thing, we don't see any difference except that the movement now is with the rigid body. It's not with the, it's not with the transform. But what's up with the player falling down? Well, that is relating to our code over here. This is the mistake that we did. You see, velocity is basically speed over time. And when you alter, when you change the when you change velocity directly, you are affecting the speed of the player. So when you directly change like this, velocity is equal to your directly affecting the current speed of the player. And look at this. We set that to zero. Because we set this to zero. That's why the player is falling down slowly. Instead, what we need to do, and I know I said we're going to add zero here because, you know, we are not changing the Y velocity. That is true. But I wanted to show you this because this is something that I see often people make mistakes. So over here, what you're going to do is you're going to say my body velocity Y. So we're simply going to apply the body's Y velocity, the current one that it has. That way it will not alter with the code that we have over here. So I'm going to copy this and simply paste it and over here also copy it and simply paste it. Over here again, if we are not pressing any of these buttons, we're still going to apply the current velocity of the rigid body because maybe we have pressed the button to jump and there you go. So now if I go in my editor and test this out again, we will see that the player falls down same as how he fell down before. You see, look at that, fall down very nicely, very quickly. If I move him over here, if I hit the play button, he is not, you know, walking on the cloud and so on and so forth. Again, we can move left and right. If I press the left arrow key and right arrow key, we can still move left and right, and there you go. So if something was not clear when it comes to all of this, make sure that you ask in the comment down below and I will help you out because this is a new format on my channel. I am evolving because, you know, I don't know. I don't know why, but you get the point. Ask down below and I will help you out. Now, before we wrap this video up, I am going to show you another way how we can move our, you know, character. So instead of using here velocity, we can do something like my body dot add force and over here, new vector two. And for the velocity of vector two, it's going to be new move or actually over here, negative move speed. There you go and zero for the Y. Now over here, we can add zero for the Y because the force is not affecting the speed of the player directly. Instead, it is adding to the speed of the player. And I can do this over here as well. So I can simply copy this, actually comment it out and copy this and paste it over here because now we're moving to the you know right side. If I were to go over here in my editor, and if I hit the play button, we will notice what is going on. So we're going to fall regularly, but now I'm moving. Look, the player is moving slowly and increasing in speed over time. Look at that. So moving slowly, look at that, moving, 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 increasing in speed. When I release the button, he stops right away. And the reason for that is because of this else over here. But if I remove this else, so if I remove this else, he will not stop right away. Instead, he will slide a little bit. And what do I mean by that? Well, let me show you. So let me, let me move the player over here. Look at that. So now I'm going to hold. I'm holding, holding, holding. I have now released the button. Look at that. I have released the button. The player was sliding. This is what add force does to the rigid body. It basically moves the rigid body by pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it. It's like that. And you know, it's like when you are pushing your friend and he's on a bicycle, you're pushing him and you stop pushing him. He still has some traction from the previous pushes and he continues to slide a little bit more before he stops. You can also do something like this over here so you can add force mode impulse. 
and uh, I can just copy this again and go back over here. You can also add force mode impulse, as I already said, and move this from here. What this force mode impulse will do, add an instant force impulse to the rigid body using its mass. Basically, it's not going to push the rigid body slowly, but instead it's going to catapult him. And I believe now, when, as soon as I hit the button, Look at that. I, I just pressed the button. Look at that. I, I just <laughs> look at <laughs> And also, this is something that I wanted to show you in one of the next videos, but it happened right now. So what the hell is this teacher? Bonus points for those of you who saw this. Okay, so you can see the what, how many we reached the video, what minute and second this is. Just put that, you know, in the comment and give your solution before I proceed. But be honest. This basically is over here inside of constraints. We need to freeze the Z rotation for the player. That's why the player, you see, he, he felt like a drunk person. So anyways, look at that. Well, we fell down. The player fell down. But basically force mode impulse, it gives a larger push. I, I simply pressed it. I just pressed it and released the button right away. Look at that. Oh, and yeah, basically you can experiment with these and you can see, I don't have to explain to you, okay, this does this, this does that. You see the code here, you see what it does and how it will move the player and so on and so forth. I usually like to do things like this by using the velocity. That's my preference. If somebody, you know, finds this, you know, not a good way, make sure that you, you know, tell me that in the comment down below. Anyways, this was this for this video. I know we didn't animate the player. We'll do that from the next video. We will animate him. We will also, you know, create the, we will talk about the jumping and all of the good stuff and so on and so forth. But anyways, if something was not clear in regards to this video, in regards to moving the player with the velocity, moving the player with the add force, in regards to, you know, using the transform to move the player, just make sure you ask in the comment down below. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video.